persistent and powerful Python programmers. This is Prof G. Are you prepared to crank out tremendous tunes, engineer an engaging instrument? Well, that's what's in store in this Circuit Python School lesson. We're going to use a Raspberry Pi Pico to build a one octave touch piano. So let's play. In this lesson, I'll be using an Adafruit MPR121 12 pad capacitive touch board. I'm using the Gator version of this board, which has 12 large alligator clip friendly pads and Stemma QT ports. And that's connected to the Pico using this less than $1 Stemma QT cable. If you've been following along with CircuitPython School, you've already learned how to wire Stemma QT to your Pico using a breadboard. And you've also learned how to use this sensor to detect 12 distinct touches. We showed you how to do this both by detecting each pad's value, whether it's currently being pressed or not, and by using debouncing, which lets us report a single result each time a pad is pressed or depressed. And we also had lessons using PWM audio to generate tones for specific notes on a keyboard, and we went through the middle octave of a piano scale. This means you've already got the knowledge to build this piano. If you need a refresher on wiring or you want to make sure that your build matches my code, you can pause and replicate this wiring diagram. For Stemma, use SDA to GP4 and SCL to GP5, power to 3.3 volt out, any ground. And for a speaker with a standard audio plug, the base goes to ground and you can clip the tip to any digital pin. I'm using GP15 here. Now you can build this simply by using the sensor and tapping the individual pads but I've extended the build a little bit. I've printed out a 12 key piano keyboard labeling all 12 keys, and I've glued this to a piece of cardboard to make it a bit sturdier. If you want, you can download a PDF for this image and print one out yourself at the URL bit.ly slash circuitpython school files, all lowercase, and the file is named keyboard.pdf. Now here I've added some copper tape to increase the contact surface, and I've alligator clipped each piece of copper tape to a touchpad on the NPR121 gator board, starting with zero for the C key and going in numerical order C sharp D D sharp E all the way through the B key which is pad 11. So let's simulate a piano. Now you can use the code we previously wrote for the capacitive touch board. I suggest using the first version that we covered that constantly reports if a pad is being pressed or not. This will make for a piano that has a cleaner transition between notes than if you use the debounced version. Then combine your capacitive touch code with the code we wrote for playing the 12 octave scale using PWM audio. So you want to write code that plays a note as long as a key is touched and that stops playing any notes if the keys are not touched. So you should have the skills to get this done. Pause and give this a try. I know you can do it. Refer to your earlier code if you need to, then resume, and we'll compare answers. So I'm going to start this build by importing code that we already wrote in the prior lesson. So in my CircuitPython school folder, I save the code that goes through all 12 notes in the middle octave as Pico PWM tones. So I'm going to load that into Moon now. And I'll save this to my CircuitPy volume as code.py. And I'm going to change the comment to read Pico Piano. And then to use the NPR121 sensor, we need to import Adafruit underscore NPR121. Then we're going to create our I squared C object. We usually call that I2C, set that equal to board dot and in all caps, stemma underscore I2C, open and close parens. And remember, this line of code also works with any board with a built in stemma QT port. And then we're going to set up our touch pad object, which we'll call touch underscore pad equals Adafruit underscore NPR121 dot in all caps, NPR121, passing in the I squared C object we just created. And then let's head down to the bottom of the code, and we're not going to use this for loop anymore. We're going to set up code that's very similar to what we used the last time we worked with this sensor. So we'll say while true, colon, and then we're going to set touch to false. So we'll initially assume that none of the pads have been touched. Then we'll look to see if any of those 12 pads is currently being touched. So we'll go through all of those with 4i in range 12, colon. And the reason we use an index instead of iterating through the list is because we're going to use this i in some other lists as well. So down below, we're going to say if touch underscore or pad in brackets i dot value colon. Now remember, this is going to be true if a touch on one of the touch pads is detected. So under that, make sure Moo indents again. Sometimes it forgets to do that. We'll say print and in parentheses f double quotes touched number colon. Then curly braces and in between the braces, we'll put in i. Now underneath this, we're not going to call the play a tone function because we don't need duration here. We only want to turn on the volume. So we set the duty cycle equal to volume, and then we'll set the tone to the frequency of the note that matches the number of the pad that was touched. And we don't get that through this freak parameter anymore. We're going to use the same index for the pad to refer to that index of the note in the notes list. 
so that'll ensure that a touch of a particular pad number will also play that notes number. And we've already got our volume set to 500, so that's a decent volume. If you wanted to increase or decrease this, you could change this value. Remember, duty underscore cycle sets the value really loud with PWM audio, so even though full loudness is around 32,760, I advise setting your volume much, much lower than that. So I'm going to copy these two lines from the play a tone function. We don't need time sleep because we want to keep playing until our finger isn't touching a pad anymore. So we'll paste these two lines below our print statement, fix the indentations, very important in Python. These two lines need to line up with the indentation of the print statement above them. Then instead of setting frequency to a value named freak, which we no longer have, we should set this to notes and in square brackets I, so it sets the same notes number as the pad number that's currently being touched. And then we also need to make sure that the touched boolean that we initially set to false is now set to true to indicate that a pad is being touched. Now why do we do that? Well, because next, we're going to outdent so this next statement is even with the for loop here because we want to run this next statement after we've gone through all of the pads to see if any has been touched. And what we want to do is we want to check to see if touched double equals false colon. If that's the case, it means that no pad is currently being touched because we just went through this for loop, checking all 12 pads, and touch started out as false and it was never set to true. So if that's the case, then we want to turn the volume to zero because we're not touching any pads. So we want to set the duty cycle to zero. So that's this line here from the play a rest function. I don't need the rest of this function, just this one line here. So I'll copy it, paste it below, indented below the if statement. And now I can delete my whole play a rest function too two, and that's it. So I can open the serial console, press save, I don't see any errors, so now I'm ready to play some notes. Oops, I touched that. All right, now we're rocking. Ah, interesting, my serial console just shut, and so... If I take a look at Moo, I get this message, could not find attached device. I probably tapped metal to metal on the Pico and got a short. My code continues to run. I'm just disconnected from Moo. So now I'll use my complete lack of talent to play a couple of songs. So that was the quintessential Boston song, Shipping Up to Boston by the Dropkick Murphys. And here's another one. That's for Boston. That's the Boston College fight song, the oldest collegiate fight song in the United States, and the song that students at my university sing at sporting events. So I hope that you've enjoyed this, Circuit Pythonista. We made a little bit of awesome in this challenge. Now go forth and use those skills for more awesomeness, play yourself a celebratory tune, keep at it, and get excited for more goodness to come.